friends, thank you so much for stopping by again. I'm really glad to see you. So this weekend, I went to my local wood store and I found an amazing piece of wood. Come a little closer so I can show you. The slab was cut from a walnut tree. On the widest diameter, the slab is about 100 by 115 centimeters wide. I chose this slab because it has a lot of character. It has a thickness of about 8 cm. This is my favorite part about a wood slab. So let's get started. The first step is to take a little chisel and chisel out all those pieces that are loose. Later when I put a resin, you don't want anything loose in the piece. Use a chisel to remove the soft pieces. Be careful not to damage the wood. Using a shop vacuum makes it easier to remove the pieces. Use your hands to pull the bigger pieces out of the wood. So I had to stop real quick because I found something really awesome. I found half a shell of a walnut. <laughs> I thought it was something weird sticking in there. I tried to remove it and that popped out. I've never found half of a walnut shell in one of my projects before, but it just shows it's 100% real walnut, right? <laughs> so let's see what else I can find. I'm almost feeling like a pirate in search of my booty. Maybe I can find the other half of the walnut. Spoiler alert, I did not find my booty. Now it's time to flip the slab to clean the other side. Now keep in mind the wood slab is very heavy, heavier than expected. It took me a few tries to flip the slab over. Here you can see the slab from a different angle. Look how beautiful the pattern is. In the end I was able to flip it and nobody got hurt. <laughs> All right, let's get back to work and let's finish the other side. Now it's time for some sanding. I took 60 grit sandpaper and sanded the surface. Don't forget your dust mask. The goal here is to smoothen out the surface and take off any debris. Once you're done sanding, wipe down the surface to take off any dust. Now it's tuck tape time. Use the tuck tape to seal off the cracks. Secure the tape tightly. Glue multiple layers across to make sure the resin cannot leak out. Once all the tape is attached, flip the slab over and lay it on a level surface. It's time to put an epoxy. There are many different brands on the market and I have tried most of them. So I can tell you from experience, not all of them work as advertised. This is a beautiful and expensive slab of wood and I wanted to go only with the best. Therefore it shows Total Boat. It's not the cheapest brand, but it's worth the money. Total Boat has many different epoxies for different projects. For my project, I will use the thick set because you can pour it up to one inch thick without risking to overheat the epoxy. It cures in about two to three days. Since we will apply the epoxy to wood, I recommend applying a thin skim coat first that helps to prevent bubbles and application later. For the skim coat, you will need a small amount of epoxy and a brush to apply it. Let's put on some gloves and lass uns anfangen. For the color, I'm using Peacock Blue from Let's Resin. Add a few drops to the resin. Mix the resin for about 3 minutes. That means it's time for a quick resin dance! It's just a small cup of resin, so that's enough. Once the resin is mixed, take a brush and dip it into the resin to apply the skim coat. Applying the skim coat avoids a lot of bubbles in the resin later. Let it dry for about half a day. The resin has dried to a tacky consistency. Now it's time to mix the resin in the big cup. This resin is a 3 to 1 mixture. You want to be as exact as possible with the amount. Make sure you use a measuring cup. Since we're using the big cup, now it's time for the big resin dance. My puppy got all excited and wanted to join. All right, back to work now. For the color, I'm using again Let's Resin in Peacock Blue. Add a few drops of the color into the cup. 
Stir the resin until it's fully blended. Now it's time to pour the resin. This resin you can pour up to 1 inch thick. However, if it's a smaller form, you can even pour the resin up to 2 inches thick. Filling in holes with resin can be a very satisfying thing to watch. Now it's time to use the heat gun to pop any bubbles. The wood piece I have has a lot of natural cracks. Therefore we'll use resin and spread it all over the wood to fill in the cracks. Once you have a thin layer applied all over the wood, it's time to let the resin cure. It's about one week later now and the resin has fully cured. I don't have a table big enough to place the wood piece on. Therefore I had to place it on the floor. If you have a table big enough, please use it, especially if you have back problems. In addition to all that, my router sled was not big enough and I had to build a new one out of a few pieces of lumber. Set up the sled around the wood table and slide the router back and forth on the sled. It is very important to level the wood sled before you begin to router the surface. This will be your final leveling and you do not want to end up at the crooked surface. Once you are done with the top side, just flip the piece over and repeat the same steps for the bottom side. Just make sure you do not go as steep as on the top side. You want to just barely remove the surface. As you can see, there is still a bit of tape left, which the router will easily remove for you. The wood is all leveled now, but a router left impressions in the wood. This can easily be removed with a sander. I started with a 60 grit sanding paper to rough sand the marks away and then I worked my way up to 100 grit. Once you're done with the sanding, you most likely will be left with some bigger holes and some pinholes that still need to be filled in. For the bigger holes, I will use resin. For the smaller pinholes, resin can be very difficult, so I will use starbond adhesive to fill those holes in. Get yourself a bright light and point it towards the table. Then take a pencil and draw squares onto the surface. Once you fill in the holes with starbond, go square by square to not forget any of the pinholes. Take your time applying the product to make sure you get every single hole. Spray the accelerator on top of the glue. Keep repeating those steps until you finish the whole surface. This is how the surface looked like after I finished filling in all the holes. Now it's time to send off all the extra product. Mix a small amount of resin to fill in the bigger holes. Use a toothpick to force the resin into the holes. This will close all the holes and I will end up at a smooth surface without any blemishes. Let the resin dry for a few days. It's a few days later now and it's time for the final sanding. Make sure you go through every single grid up to about 400. For the final round of sanding, use some water and spray the table to raise the grain. Let it dry overnight and then do the final sanding to sand off the raised grain. This will make the table extra smooth. This is how the table looks after sanding. I wiped it down with mineral spirits to make sure it's super clean and ready for the finish. For the finish I'm using Osmo. It leaves me with an amazingly smooth finish and it's made in Germany. Apply a thin coat of the finish all over the table. Applying the finish to a project you worked on for days is the most amazing feeling. I love the rich dark color that comes through as well as the wood pattern. Take off any excess finish and then let the finish dry for about 10 hours and then apply a second coat. And we are fertig! Like always, thank you so much for watching and your support. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. See you at the next one. Tschüss!